Oh boy, if you have ever pulled the trigger or release on an elk, it's a memory you will never forget. Another thing you won't forget are all the questions running through your head after the shot, trying to recall everything that happened in just a few seconds. Believe me, y'all, I've been there. The shot, the hit, the way the animal acted, where did I hit it? Which way did it run? When did I see it last? And where did I see it last? Your brain is trying to process everything that just happened. But what do we do from here? What should I do after the shot is made? Well, friends, today, as your elk hunting coaches, we're gonna cover just that. We're gonna help you with the process from the moment that you hit your animal to what to do when you find it. We're gonna cover your mindset after the shot, identifying the type of hit, where, when, and how to track it, what to do if you lose blood, cautions when approaching your downed animal. Those topics along with our Elk Bros shout outs and questions from our Elk Bros mailbox. So my friends, pull up a chair, adjust your volumes just right, and welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting, brought to you by ElkBros.com with your host, Gilbert Ornelas, and elk hunting coach, Joe Gilly. You want to hunt elk? And they live to hunt elk. Their goal is to share with you what they have learned grinding it out for over 35 seasons, doing what they love. So come on into camp and set a spell. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunters. Hello again, everyone. If you're first time with us, glad to have you. Hope you enjoy our show. And for those blue collar hunters out there following our show and grinding it out every week, welcome back to Elk Camp. I'm Gilbert Ornelas, the host of the show, coming to you live from Spring, Texas, and joining me from New Mexico, your elk hunting coach, Joe Gillia. New How's Mexico. it going, Joe? Yeah, buddy, and it's going to be getting cold here in the Big NM pretty soon. So, Ooh, man, I heard it's going to be <laughs> down in the single digits in yeah. some places up there, man. And, and before Angel I get started, and before I get started, bud, I just got to because I know um, how important it is for him to listen to these when he's not here. So, Chav, bud, uh, uh, again, this one's for you, man. Uh, every Always one thinking of these, about man. him praying for you, Chav. Yeah, and uh, again, well, you know, there's, there's. For you guys out there, um, Chav, Chav has an illness. We're not going to go into a lot of detail right now. There will be a time when we share all that, but uh, it is not going to keep me. It is not going to keep Gilbert from killing this because uh, that's what that, that guy expects from us. And I tell you what, there's nobody that, uh, that I want to please more than that, that man right there. Oh, and this weekend, uh, he will be in Portales, Portales, That's New Mexico, awesome. where he will be inducted into Eastern New Mexico's Hall of Fame. So, That's so cool, uh, man. Yeah. We're so proud of him. And, you know, along this journey, I just ask for all our blue-collar hunters out there and all our grinders to keep Chav uh, Chavez in, his, in your prayers. Um, I've got a special request tonight, too, Joe. Yes, I got sir. a friend of mine who got hurt in an accident last weekend. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just want to pray for Chad and his family. You uh, bet. I won't go into what Chad's last name is, but Chad, we want you to know here at Elk Bros and all over the country, we're asking for prayer for healing. Uh, Chad's in critical condition. Uh, Y'all, he, you know, he fell out of a UTV and uh, he's got a brain injury. So, guys, I, I, all of you out there, I'd love to have your prayers for Chad and his family. So, uh, prayers for healing and uh, prayers for nothing, nothing, no lasting effects for this deal. Uh, hopefully, it's just a bump in the road and, and uh, Chad can get past it. Yes, sir. Uh, we got you in our hearts, got you in our prayers, bud. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of healing out there that we want from everybody. Amen. Okay. Joe, tonight we're going to get right with it, man. All right. Uh, you know what time it is. Shout out, shout out. It's time shout for our Elk Bros shout, shout outs. <laughs> Guys, if you're new to our show, these are shout outs for just a few cities with the most listeners topping our charts this week. You betcha. And, but you know what? I, I asked about this last week. I told people when you put, you know, send in reviews for, for us, man, when you go to Apple Podcasts uh, and you do reviews to please leave some names up there. And, and I went in and, and checked our last ones. And, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thank 
these people for their incredible reviews. And I'm going to ask all of y'all out there that's listening. I still, you know, uh, if you can rate us, please, and if you could review us. I mean, uh, if, you, <laughs> if you don't like what we're doing, tell us. If you like what we're doing, tell us. But don't be mean like Gilbert says, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, don't be ugly. Don't, Don't be, be ugly. <laughs> Look, we we take all the reviews, good or bad, kidding. and the bad ones just fuel us. So y'all keep talking mess, yeah. right? At the end of the day, we got you. We but got I'm going to thank these guys and all you guys out there. When you send a review in, please make sure that you put your name where you're from. And kicking it off, man, PJ uh, Hennigan from Bend, Oregon. Uh, I want to thank PJ, man. Max Layton from Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, and, you know, some of these guys I've actually talked to on the phone, you know, after that to give them some personal thanks and, and hooked up with them. And, man, some incredible people all over the United States. And let me tell you what, Gilbert, the hunting community, bro, we, it gets small, it gets tight, it gets family, it gets close. And, For you sure. know, I, I think a lot of people realize that, when you talk hunter to hunter, man, it is so cool because people just want to help. And, and Max is just one of those individuals. He's, he's a guide over in Colorado in that Pueblo area, just a super individual. Shane Judy from Little Rock, Washington. Big shout out to you. Chip Nelson, Jamestown, New York. Travis Driscoll. I don't have where Travis is from, but Travis, buddy, you let us know. We'll give you a shout out. And remember, last week, I didn't get any, man. I didn't get any of these small towns sending any <laughs> anything to me. Sure. Look, look if, if you guys are small town and you guys aren't getting registered and, and you, have, you don't think your town's being registered because of the size of your community, get on. Go send it to you send it yeah. to me. Send it to right. Joe at elkbros.com. That's, That's E-L-K-B-R-O-S dot com. Send it directly to me. Tell me your town's name, your name. Tell me something about your town, and we will give you a shout out here on our podcast. So also Michael Nord from Grand Forks, North Dakota. So uh, I, I wanted to shout out to those guys giving reviews and Gilbert. Um, there's one more group I'm going to give a shout out because most people don't know about this group and it's because I don't do a lot of talking about it. And sure, I, sure. it's because we have, um, the content everybody's getting from us. They've always got this for free. Um, as you guys know, we're not sponsored by anybody at this time. Uh, we've had some people have asked, but they don't fit what we do and so that it has to be things that we believe in and 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 things that that we use that we support and and that's just how we feel about it so we can be very very picky and and but we still got to pay for the lights to be on and that's i tell it. you what um there's a few people uh, we have what we call a, a patreon page and what that is is if if people go to our patreon page um and they become a member they can pledge uh, whatever amount they want to monthly to be a member there to basically support our programming. You know, you got PBS and you got the blue collar elk gun, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So these guys have um, actually been helping to keep the lights on. They're helping to pay our monthly bill um, just for uh, having our, our podcast maintained on a site uh, and, you know, for our, our hard drive space that we have up in the cloud. And so I, I just want to thank you guys personally, uh, Larry Gill. And actually Larry Gill has been a friend of mine for years and, you know, for him to go on there and, and to show his kind of support, you know, for us monthly is just, uh, I can't thank Larry enough. Joe Doherty. And uh, uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about Joe. I sent an email out to him uh, thanking him. And evidently, he just wants to wants to support us, which is just super, man. I appreciate That's that. Awesome. Chad Hashin, you, you probably heard that name, Chad Hashin, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Chad, man, uh, uh, just really, he got yeah, his elk. Um, did, if man. you go on Sends to our pictures too. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. You go on to our elk bro site at elkbros.com. We have a gallery there uh, of, yep. we call it our grinders gallery guys that have sent stuff into us. And, and Chad is proud and loud on that one right there, man. You betcha. And fantastic. Uh, and Zach Fisher, an, another Zach Fisher is somebody that, uh, uh, is really somebody that supports everything that we do, Gilbert. And uh, he jumped Appreciate on there today. It, Zach. 
Yeah, it was so appreciated. Guys, uh, thank you so much for doing that, uh, for going on there and just contributing a small amount monthly to help us uh, with our programming. Uh, it shows that you believe in what we do and that you have value in what we do, and you're helping us help a lot of other people. That's and, right. you know, the stories that we've had on our site that have come in, Gilbert, you know, We've oh got, my uh, gosh. Yeah. So cool. I, I get an email just about every day from somebody that's told us their, their story and how it went down. Yeah. Good, bad, different, ugly. I mean, exactly. it's, uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, guys, I can't tell y'all, y'all keep sending those pictures and keep sending your stories in. We're kind of living through you right now because we're not in the woods. So yeah. it's, uh, it's cool. <laughs> Joe's fixing to hit the woods and me too. I'm going to yeah. get to go hunt with my cousin and here in the next couple of days, of course, we're a week out from this. So right. uh, we'll have done it by the time you guys get this. But yeah. for sure, it's uh, it's going to be good. And I'll be hitting the woods this weekend, too. And so yeah. that, that you know, that's all good. And for you guys, I want you to understand, when you go, if you go to elkbros.com and you, you can go to uh, – uh, and you'll see some of our stories right on there. You know, we've had people that have sent stories to us that um, lost an animal, and that's yeah. on there, and we talk about that. And I think, I mean, look, y'all, that's reality. It ain't all peaches and cream. And, <laughs> and I've been on the, I've been on the sour apple end of this deal for a long oh, time before I got it right. Yeah, and you know the 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 hunters out there that are worth their salt you know, they have a hard time swallowing that pill. And, but that's, you know, y'all, those, y'all are the ones we want out there. And so there's just a lot of discussion about that. And, uh, and, you know, what I loved about, uh, we, it was Jeremy Center. He's from actually from Canada, sent yeah. in a story. And what was so cool about his story was no excuses. It was my bad. I, sure. I rushed. I shouldn't have, there's no reason for it. So, uh, that's way cool in my book, you know, fantastic yep. story yep. guy knew it. I've been there, done the same thing, Jeremy, uh, rushed, knew I shouldn't have, knew I should have waited. And, uh, you know, you just can't, you can't put a price tag or you, you can't put value on experience. That experience is going to carry you through the next time and you'll make better decisions in the next time. I promise you. And I know he's um, going to go from being a good Harry, hunter to a great hunter, man. You yeah, know what absolutely. I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And and don't let it get you down, brother. We we've been bucked off that horse before, and you know every good cowboy been bucked off a horse. He if he's going to keep riding horses, he's going to have to get back on. So you guys just put your chin strap on and pull your panties up, zip them up, and let's go to work. We got there. You other, go. other things to do. Yeah. You know. And I, you know, and then we got the story from Jordan Schroeder and, and, you know, a proud and loud picture right there of his group, you know, uh, had so incredible cool. experiences, had incredible opportunities, um, didn't connect at the end, but they, my friend are hooked. <laughs> so the photo that that guy sent of them that, with the mountain behind them. Oh, oh my God. Gorgeous. gorgeous. Man. So you guys go check that stuff out. All right. Yeah. Good okay, stuff. so let's get to those shout outs now, man. Here are the ways that you know that you're a local in this city that's topping our charts this week. If you try to avoid turning left at the alcohol Walmart red light because you know you're going to sit there for 20 minutes, you might just live in this city. <laughs> you go up the Foothills Parkway to catch the view from the top of the world. You mm -hmm. might just live in this city. You probably have a season pass to Dollywood. <laughs> and I know it's somewhere in them Smokies if it's going to be around Dollywood. Yeah, I tell you what, you tell everyone you're from Knoxville because no one ever knows where your town is. <laughs> That's Maryville, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Maryville, Tennessee. Man, I, I tell you what, it's a beautiful state. Oh, man. And and you know what I got to tell you, too, Gilbert? Here, here's the cool thing is there are five townships, cities, whatever you want to call them, on, on our shout-outs this week. And, and for the first time in my life, I've never heard of any of them. In fact, you're going to have to help me with Missouri because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be lost here. All right, bro. You're up. Boy, I'm just looking down at that. I'm like, dang, <laughs> you ain't getting no help out of this. Mexicano, I guarantee you. <laughs> Yo, this township takes the name from the cranberry bogs that used to be prevalent in this area. 
pioneers arrived in the 19 in the 1790s and discovered uh, that this region was home to major operations like Westinghouse in the Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. Cranberry Township, man. Cranberry wow. Township. In the house. Guys, man, we get so many people from Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for being listeners. Next up, its name. Oh, man, if, if you guys have a romantic bone in your body, <laughs> this one, man, I thought it was so cool. And, and I'm telling you, the city, I, I hope I don't blow, uh, I don't speak, speak French. I don't even speak it. <laughs> so Right. <laughs> its name. Me speaking, not a either. <laughs> I don't speak it. Its name, yeah. which means broken heart in French, comes from the nearby lake. Legend has it that an Indian princess fell in love with a French fur trapper, but the love was not returned. According to the story, she then jumped from a ledge overlooking the lake, and the lake then formed itself into a broken heart. Hmm. Crève Coeur, Missouri. I like it, Joe. You like it? Huh? Crève Coeur. Yeah, oh, that sounds Jean good Paul to me. Je <laughs> <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> oui, oui. Not now, man. I already went. I'll wait till later. Okay. Uh, up next, Joe, this city's home to the world's headquarters of Chrysler, the Palace of Auburn Hills, home of the Detroit Piston and Oakland University. If it's autumn, you'd be doing yourself a disservice as well by not stopping by Yates Cider Mill. It has renowned cider and donuts and beautiful nature walk along the Clinton River watershed. Auburn Hills, Michigan. Auburn Hills. I mean, it just everything about that just sounded beautiful, man. Yeah, man. My wife uh, is from Ann Arbor, which is just south there. So Yeah, we've had um, Ann Arbor on here, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of Michigan people. In fact, Michiganders. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, we've had some successful mission ganders too. Yes, sir. Yeah, you betcha. They're on our website. Nicknamed mm -hmm. the BC's northern capital because it's the largest city in northern British Columbia. It is named after King George V and Prince George, Duke of Kent. A popular symbol of this city today is Mr. PG. <laughs> 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 Mr. PG, a large log-shaped figure which first appeared in a parade float in 1960. And I, I guess they didn't want to get rid of that, man, when they got it there. <laughs> so, uh, a, a big shout out to our Canadian guys up in the north up there, Prince George, British Columbia. Awesome, man. And, and you know, Gilbert, I, I've got to, man. Uh, it's so cool. We have over 32 countries now that yeah. are following our podcast every now and then. And the big one being Canada, but right behind Canada is Spain. And get this, Egypt wow. is up behind wow. Spain, Kenya, and Japan and Australia are tied for the fifth spot there. That's so, too cool, man. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome, I, Joe. <laughs> it is Good way, stuff. way cool. Well, Joe, tonight's topic is yeah. so important. So many times it's what we do after the shot that can yeah. really mean the difference between an incredible experience or one that's real hard to swallow. Yeah, absolutely, dude. And, you know, uh, as we're getting into this topic tonight, um, I think that a lot of what happens after the shot can also be helped if we have the right mindset before the shot too you and, you and you know guys i can just tell you man and when we preach this all the time if your shot is marginal if you haven't looked at our shot placement video and and listen to that now again when you look at that there's some of those shots that we don't take as a bow hunter that rifle hunters now are opened up to you know, there's some of those forward quartering shots. If you know where to put it on the front of the shoulder, you know, those quartering away shots are definitely a good shot for you, you know, and uh, sure. I mean, they can make those frontals, man. I mean, so there's a lot of things different with that because of the weapon. But guys, if it's marginal, if you if it's outside your comfort zone, if it's not within your skill set, the best shot you can take is no shot at all. You do that and you take the quality shot that you know is going to put that animal down, then, buddy, you're in the money, and you're not having to deal with a lot of things. That does not mean that it always goes right. That doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, there are times, I don't care what you do, we cannot control everything, and there's going to be times when things 
go south on you. I'm yep. sorry, it's 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 bound to happen. Okay. Oh, hun. Yep. Yeah, a bow hunt and even with rifle, just because oh, yeah. of the distance, man, that, that you you're bet. doing with that. And, and, uh, and we'll talk about some of that stuff. But also, guys, if you have a second shot opportunity, you've got to get it in your mind. When you take that shot at that animal, the first thing you do is you lock and load shot number two. You put that arrow on, you get that other bullet in. If, if you're, and we got a lot of guys rifle hunting right now. You pop that booger and he starts to go down, right? If he's still standing, you're putting Get number two again. into him. If Get he's still again. standing, you're putting number three into him. Yes, sir. If he goes down and even starts to stand up, you're going to put that other one in there. In there. Yes, there you sir. go. So yes, the best thing is to put that animal down where it's at. And, yeah. uh, and, and same thing with a bow, man. I mean, if you take that shot and you put a hit on it, a lot of times that animal turns to run, you scream at it, you cow call, it stops sometimes and turns and looks back at you. Now, man, shot number two goes into it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm just telling you, the more that we put inside that boiler room, inside that animal, the quicker we're going to put that animal down. Yeah, I mean, okay? you had to, you had to call me off shooting mine again, <laughs> Joe. Right. I, mean, yeah, yeah, I done I locked and loaded <laughs> and ready to rock and roll again. Cause yes, sir. I'm I'm of that same opinion, Potter. There you when go. You, when you st and I I knew my hit was pretty good, but if he's going to stand there and let me look at him again, he's getting another one. You know, I mean, yes, I just, that's just the way I feel. So that. much better that to happen than to watch him walk off and have mm -hmm. to wait that half hour and then you're in search mode. And if that blood dries up, I would much more rather get a second in. Okay. Really important to lock and load again, yep. guys. Don't, Definitely. don't get out of, look, it's real easy to get spun out. If we make a marginal shot or we even make a bad shot, don't get spun out, get in the game, stay in the game and understand that we got a job to do and put this guy down. Right. Right. And, Absolutely. And, and stay in the game, keep moving. Yep. You know, if he's moving, you can move. Uh, and he's going to stop eventually, especially if he's hit hard, he's going to stop. And if you can get in there where you can get another, another hit on him, your chances of success are go up even higher. You know, and I, it, the other thing, Gilbert, too, is if you're getting ready to squeeze that trigger, if you're going to shoot an animal, you have to already have that belief in your mindset that you're going to, no matter what, honor that animal and be yeah. willing to do whatever it takes to recover it. If that is your mindset, I mean, I don't care how, I, I mean, if you're tracking for 12 hours, you're tracking yeah. for 12 hours. That's right. So if you don't want to be tracking for 12 hours and you have that mindset that you're going to do whatever it takes to recover it, that's one thing that's going to lead you not to take that marginal shot. Sure. Okay. Sure. And, and the other thing that I, I want to put out there, Gilbert, is that no blood and does not equal no hit. Amen. You know, uh, yeah, if we got a shot inside of 40 yards, generally we're going to hit an animal, you know, and, and you need and to, you're, you need if to you're a rifle it. hunter and you're sighted in yeah. and, and you're, you're on the kill zone at 200, 250 yards, I guarantee you that there's a, there's a bullet gone through that booger. So yeah. you get out there, there's a lot of things you got to do to be able to locate that blood or to make sure that you're finding that animal. Again, we talked about second and third shots, but if you yeah. have practiced and you have, on that mark and you pull that trigger or you squeeze off that release or you let it off those fingers, you, if you made the shot, assume you made the hit. Right. All right. Okay. Makes so, sense. Yeah. So these are some of the things that I want you guys to have in your head. And when you take that out there in the woods with you, it totally becomes a part of your thinking. It becomes part of your mantra. It becomes part of who you are when you hunt. Okay. So right. now we can talk about, after the shot sure. right and uh and and the process because gilbert i think a lot of times but it's kind of like there's two things that i think a lot of guys really are not prepared for or not don't become students of and one is what to do number one after the shot is taken bow or rifle and the second one is get an animal out of the hills. No I, doubt. You know, <laughs> I, no doubt. The I, I true think, work begins. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of guys, I, I don't know if they, they, you know, just aren't sure if they're going to get one or they'll deal with it if that happens, mm -hmm. but you had better have a plan. And yeah. <laughs> we're, we're what gonna, did one of our viewers, one of our uh, 
Elk Bros guy sent in. He said, the worst thing that could happen to me is I kill one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> the adventure is going to be great. But oh, the worst yeah. thing that could happen is I kill one. I'm like, oh, you got no clue, partner. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, you got cold weather and you can hang yeah. animals. I mean, there's a lot that comes in. We're not only just talking about uh, the, the, the difficulty and how hard it is on the body. Right. We're talking about ensuring that we get the meat out without it going bad on us. So That's right, there, there's a lot of things involved in that. Okay. Right. So guys, you've taken the shot, right? Um, I don't care if it's rifle or if it's bow, make sure that no matter what you do, keep a clear head, uh, keep a positive attitude. And if you come if you make finding that animal, locating that animal, doing all the right things, if you kind of make it a competition, you you know, you you reach down in yourself and say that I'm not going to give on this. I'm not going to give up on this. I'm not going to quit. Yeah. Make sure you have that to make it happen. All right. Sure. So, right, Gilbert? Absolutely, man. Yeah. You know, once you've once you've let the, the arrow go and everything or the, you know, you took your shot with your rifle you know, you got to have a real positive attitude, no matter what, whether you thought it was marginal or not, you got to stay in the game and then Definitely. pay attention to what happens next. Right. Exactly. It's super pay important for you attention. to pay attention. Determine what you just last saw, man. Right. You know, where was the animal when you last saw it? Uh, where was it standing when hit? What was the last location? Now, don't be in a rush on this because, you know, I've seen some guys, man, they make a shot. They jump in and they're like, whoa! Oh, yeah. Dog <laughs> pile one another and everything. Yeah. And yeah. that, and look, I've been there. I've had somebody close to me dog pile me before. <laughs> but we watched him fall, tip over, and feed up in the air, right? So there's a time to celebrate and there's a time to be quiet, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and, you, and you can, I mean, you don't have to scream to dog pile somebody. You can just no, knock them on their true. butt, oh, you know. Oh, <laughs> But I'm a big old boy too, man. And I mean, he steamrolled me right there. <laughs> Buddy, I was pumped. That's all it was, yeah, man. Awesome, dude. So when you uh, stare down the shaft of an arrow, man, it's like you're riding that arrow shaft, you know? So it's pretty cool. I got to tell you. And so what I want to tell you guys about this is, is, is you, you've got to play that scenario in your mind. When you take that shot, you've got to see that it's only seconds. It's Good. only seconds. And, and yet you've got to keep it in there, you know, uh, because, uh, you're going to play that out. You're going to say where you last saw it. What was the last sound I heard? Where did I hear it from? Where was the last? Okay, that was the shot right there. Well, where was the last place that I saw that animal disappear? And you need to keep that in there. Now, uh, you want to mark that location where you're at, where you took that shot with yep. big old orange piece of tape. You don't want to lose that location because it could be critical in a lot of different things that we're going to talk about, you know, but do not be in a rush. Now, if you're a rifle shooter and you shot 200 yards, hopefully you watch that booger go down because you're in a high point or something like that. But, mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't, it's very important for you too. And most likely, before you took that shot, I can almost guarantee you probably ranged that animal, right? Yep. And if you range that animal, you got to remember that because now when you send somebody to go through your spot, and guys, walkie-talkies for rifle hunters are huge. They're yep. huge. Don't depend on your cell phones because you get in some of these places where you don't have service. Right. But if you have a walkie-talkie, now you can send a partner out there. You can give him hand signals. And yeah. you develop hand signals between the two of you on what means going back, what means going forward. And remember, he's going to be 200, 300 yards away from you. He might have to look at you through his binos. But whether you're going to the right, whether you're going to the left, right, and then you're going to tell him when to stop. You're going to do signals for moving forward. You're going to do signals for moving backwards. You're going to do those different things like that. And Or on the walkie-talkie, you can just tell him. And if you're doing that, you can look through your range finder and you can tell him, all right, go, no, you got to go 20 yards back because you range that animal at 258 and you're going to put that person of yours at 258. At that yeah. point, now hopefully they can find some track or they can find some blood by the time he gets over there. But what I'm telling my bow hunters and even the rifle hunters is be careful of rushing up on that spot too soon because yeah. if you made a hit on that animal and that animal has I, I don't care 
there's so many types of hits where if that animal feels bad, it could even be a hit in the leg. I mean, it hurts yeah. that leg. He goes off, he's going to bed down 50 yards, 100 yards. And if you go out there and that animal spots you, uh, and even if it's a, you know, a liver shot or anything like that, and they spot you, you're going to jump that animal, and you're now going to make what could have been a 50-yard tracking job yeah. into a half-mile, oh, two-mile yeah. tracking job, mm -hmm. okay? So you yeah. don't want to jump an animal. No. Uh, you know, the Venezuelan mafia, they call it the laws of Beto, and that's one of my – that's one of my big things when we're hunting down here in South Texas is uh, we put a shot on an animal. Number one, it's thick where we hunt down here and there ain't nothing down here. That won't scratch, bite, poke you. And so, you know, we try to make a good shot, but I wait almost, you know, an hour and a half, two hours before I ever get down and go look, you know, right. I just, even now, if I see the animal fall with insight or something like that, I might, I might shorten that up. Sure. You can ask Joe, when I shot my bull this year, we watched him fall within 10, 15 yards, but I really wanted to wait. I didn't want to go down there and go look <laughs> at him. And I'm like, man, I don't want to, you know, if I got one lung or something, he went down and laid down. I do not want to get him up because those critters are such great athletes. Oh yeah. They're incredible. They can strong. run absolute miles before that adrenaline wears off. And you just, you lose you lose the blood trail real easy when they're sure. really erratically running, you know? Well, and so, high grass, different things, man, that yeah. make it hard. Yeah. There's all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah. And so it's real important for you to take your time, man. Right. You sit down, get you something to eat or drink. I like you get sitting down, eating me a power bar or even one of my peanut butter, bacon and honey sandwiches, whatever, man, just and, and, and take that moment in. Man, I'm telling you, it helps me to kind of smell the roses, you know. Right. We, we we take that whole whole moment in and reflect on it, and uh, you know, just like you said, you know, try to remember everything that was going on, Joe. Sure, definitely, yeah. man. You know, and and it slows down the moment. Take it yeah. in. I mean, gosh, man, your your season's going to go over fast enough, and sure. you don't want it to end in a hard lesson, so take that time. And, yeah. you know, start asking yourself questions. Talk to the people around you. Get together to find out what they saw. Was sure. the animal walking or running off? If the animal ran for a little bit and then stopped, and you watch that animal and the head goes down in any way and starts to walk off, that is a sick booger, and he's getting ready to lay <laughs> down, or she right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Did it stand yes. in one place for a while? Mark that if it did, because that's going to be a great place to be the first place to find blood. Yep. Okay. So you want to mentally mark that. And what I generally do with something like that is now you guys have cell phones. All yep. right. You can pull up your cell phone. You can look at that exact view. You can enlarge it to the tree that was right by where it's on. You can take a picture of that and then you can walk straight to it. Sure. I mean, there's, there's different kinds of aids out there now that all of us carry in our pocket and we don't realize it, Huge. you know, yep. or, or bring up your range finder and range that animal where he's standing. And you can go to the exact spot where that That's animal right. was. Okay. That's right. Um, did you see an arrow? Did, you know, did you see the penetration? You know, a lot of guys will say, I saw the fletch buried up, you know, where was it located at? You know, now I can tell you this, a lot of times where you think you hit that animal is not where you hit it. Yeah. You know, just because of angles and different things, you know, did what you makes the new Luminox so impressive. Joe. Oh man. Yeah. 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 I, and I've never shot with the Luminox. Um, I haven't either. Yeah, but, but they're uh, cool. <laughs> they are way cool. And I, I, I love seeing it. Uh, I, I've just never, um, I don't know, it, just adding that, I don't know, were they seven bucks to your arrow or something, something like that? Man. I don't know? get many of mine back anyway. They get nuclear on me and yeah. uh, I don't know, they're still orbiting the earth or something. So well, I'm and gonna, I tell you, you shoot yeah. that booger at 20, 25 yards, you don't need a lumen knock. So, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep bringing them that close, Joe. We'll be good. There you go. Did you see that arrow hanging? And if you did see it hanging, did you see the fletch or no fletch? In mm -hmm. other words, that'll tell you right away if if it's hanging with the fletch hanging down to the bottom, that means that arrow didn't get much penetration right. or something happened to push it back out. So you got to you got to see that in your vision. If you see it hanging out with no fletch on it, that's that broadhead side hanging out and yeah. and that means you got two holes. So 
Uh, and guys, remember, my goal for you is to always get two holes, okay? That's it. Uh, if you use your range finder, make sure that you memorize what that distance was and tell somebody next to you. Cause I mean, when things get crazy, you get excited, you might forget what it was or, you know, Gilbert's a friggin' uh, that, that dude's like, you're like Memorex, man. I mean, you just <laughs> lock in on everything and uh, which is pretty cool. I'm a vi real visual guy. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my profession lends itself to that and, and understanding, remembering lots of things like that attention for detail um, and, you know, just training, I guess, Joe. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, look, I can sit in one area and you be calling and I can, I can lock up about seven or eight different targets and know exactly how far they are. You yeah. Know? Right. And, and that helps me when the animal walks in, I ain't gotta be. Well, I think know, that's a, I, I think that's a big plus that a lot of whitetail hunters bring with them too, yeah. because when they yeah. do that in those woods. So I think, I think that's huge. You know, it, it's so important though, when you're trying to remember where that fletch was, where that arrow was, or where you had that scope when you shot. Yeah. And, and, you know, because you want to figure out that wound location, that, that, where that uh, weapon, where that bullet or that arrow ended, because that's going to tell you a lot about the type of hit. And sure. guys, did you see both front legs? Okay. Did you see both back legs? Because that tells you something immediately. That means that animal's either quartering to you or quartering mm -hmm. away from you. Mm -hmm. And and then so if you're now, if it's an arrow or it's a bullet that hits behind the shoulder and you saw both front legs, now you might have only got one lung, liver, and then and then back into the paunch or out the other side. So yeah. that means something. And or you only got liver. So uh, and we're going to talk about all that stuff. So. Pay attention to the animal's reaction. When you shot, you can tell a lot of times. I mean, when you hit an animal really solid, you'll see them hump up a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, That's it, right, it, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, so realize that. Pay attention to the placement. Pay attention to their reaction, okay? And for me, Joe, some most of the time when I release an arrow – I always immediately think that my shot placement's a little high and I do go a little high center where I center my pin, but I think it's because the arrow is going up in flight. And by the time it reaches the animal, it's leveled out. But I always think, Oh, it's a look, it's a touch high. I've told that to Chav and you guys every time I think it was a little, little high, but I think we're going to be okay. And so when I go up there and look at him, once he's down, it was center mass, you know, it was right, right. where I wanted it to be. Maybe right. just a touch high, but uh, I, I think we all get to see in that fletch go away from us and it's got an arc to it, you know? Right. Sure. So, and so it kind of makes it seem like it's a little bit high yeah. on that, mm -hmm. you know, so guys in, in all of this part now, you, you've done your, your site stuff, you've done the talking stuff, you guys have just sat down right where you were at. Um, rifle hunters, it's a little different, you're staying up, uh, you're checking that, you're watching with the binos, you're trying to see where that animal is, uh, if it's thick trees or whatever, where they went in at, a lot of times they don't go in too far, just the shock and the hemorrhaging of that bullet, if you put it on, they're For not sure. going to go very far. Yeah. Uh, now, if you put a bad shot on, that's that's a little bit different, but I tell you, uh, there's there should be a lot less loss with with that gun because you have the opportunity to have the distance to load by the time before that animal can even take off again and get another one in them. Okay, yeah. um, after you do your waiting period, there's two things that you want to do, and you know. Uh, Again, it depends. Your waiting period kind of depends on what you saw. If you hit back on that animal, then you really need to wait because you know that you got paunch. You know that you gut shot that animal. If you hit it kind of mid-body just behind the lungs, there's a good chance that you're on that, on that liver. Yeah. But whichever one of those you hit means that you have a wait period that you have to back out from. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now... I will generally, 
one person and generally for me if i take that shot i'm going to go up and look and in my last spot i'm going to try i'm hunting up to that point i'm staying silent i'm keeping my eyes ahead of me i've already waited my 45 minutes to an hour before i've even moved and you got to be careful because if you saw that animal walk off and he could be bedded in the area and it was back then i wouldn't even go up to look for blood i would back out of there because i know it's a bad shot and i'm definitely going to wait if it's gut shot gilbert i'm waiting six to twelve hours oh yeah for sure six yeah, and to it, twelve hours that's what makes having video of it really oh, Im important so if you can get it you know uh and then being able to read your sign on the ground definitely. you know uh if you got you know real dark red and or greenish brown you can smell that bile that's on the that's on the arrow, you know, you caught paunch and maybe some of that liver, man, it's six hours minimum. I mean, right. minimum, you might as right. well go back to camp, eat some lunch. If you did it in the morning, yep. go back to camp, eat some lunch and let him go and lay down. If you push that animal, your chances of finding him go to about 10%. Right. I, I'm serious. And if, unless you have a dog and, sure. but short of having a dog, if you'll just let him go lay down, if he got hit in the liver in the paunch area, they're going to die. Unfortunately, right. this is true. But it really depends on the situation that he's with the herd and also how well you pushed him, how much you pushed him. Sure. Uh, if you pushed him at all, he's not going to lay down for a long time. But if you didn't push him at all, chances are he's going to walk over there 75 yards and bed down, right? Right. Because he's sick. He don't feel good, you know. and you know, I, I've watched him. Uh, you know, I shot my first bull that's right here above me. I shot that dude and uh, got part of one lung and got the whole part of the liver. And I watched him stand up sick for 45 minutes, just Definitely. sick as a dog. Yeah. And fell over and, you know, walked off, got back up, fell over. And, I mean, but we knew uh, that that was a dead bull, right? We just had to back off of we it. We just had to time. back off of it. Right. We gave him all night. Yeah, and he you took know, those 12 hours that we gave him, too. He, he did, definitely every did, bit know? of it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. we learned we learned a whole lot on a lot of these things is this, you can't, you just can't rush a marginal hit. No, guys, if it's a lung shot yeah. and you have a pass-through and you see blood pa flying out on, on both sides. Pink, reddish, thir thir bone. 30 minutes, you, you're good if you have that pass-through. Yeah. Uh, if you did not get the pass through and you see, and that arrow still sticking in that animal, you know, wait that hour, man. Um, let them go down, let them expire. If it's a liver shot and you can generally tell that liver shot because you're going to get that dark red blood. Now, dark red can also be muscle blood. Yeah, I mean, sure. you should, you should be one ordering. in. Right. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, you get a little graininess on your arrow as it passed through that liver, and you can almost feel it's like grit. And it's not sand grit, but it's, it's from that liver. And you can almost, if you know what it feels like and what it looks like, you can almost see it on the, on the fletching and on your arrow shaft as well. And, and it'll and have again, a little bit different smell. If, too. if you saw the placement of where that shot went in too, yeah. you know, uh, you can tell by where that is. It's just a little bit behind those lungs right in there. And, yeah. and uh, you know, when it's, if it's a little lower, it's not that much further behind there, the That's way those right. lungs curl. But uh, if, if you see that dark red blood and you thought you were in the lungs, and you're not getting the pink froth, but you're getting the dark red, it's most likely that you have liver. If you have yeah. liver, it's four to eight before you're even going to go in on that animal. Four yeah. to eight. Yeah. If you've gut shot it, if you go over there and you smell that arrow, you got a little bit of blood on it, and you and you and if you see any kind of bile or you see any kind of uh, uh, stomach cuttings or anything like mm -hmm. that on there, uh, now you're looking at six to 12. And yeah. guys, give it to it, you know? Um, yeah. If, if you do, if you back out and you give that, like I, so we just had a case just on, on our hunt at the end of September For and sure. uh, Eric Dunn made a, a, a good shot on the animal, um, but was not positive because of the angle, if it was lung or if it was all liver or, or what. So immediately we found blood just a little ways from where he hit it and the animal had run up stopped and this is where i tell you to watch the animal and that animal's head went down and started walking off over the hill 
So now we know that animal's sick. So the one thing I did not want to do that would be the biggest mistake would be to go and walk up on top of that hill to take a look. Yeah. Down, down on the bottom, I found some blood, found that dark red blood. And I, so we knew he had a hit. And I said, bud, six hours. We come back and, and I hear, ha, ah, ah. ha. <laughs> there was already in six hours, there was a crow on that bull. He had died. There was a crow on it, and, and they'll go for the eyes first, you mm -hmm. know, when they do that. But let us, that bull went 50 yards from where I last saw it, laid down and died. Yeah. So, yeah, we could have probably found that bull two hours earlier, or mm. we could have jumped it two hours earlier. Oh, yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? So, Basically, if you'd have walked up to the top of the hill right after y'all shot him, you'd have bumped him then. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I'll tell you, let's talk about tracking, Gilbert. Let's say, yeah. you know, we have that deal and that bull's out there. And, and what generally happens, you know, if you've got a, a group of guys in your camp and you're doing tracking, everybody wants to help. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And sure. they have great intentions, but guys, right. you got to have roles and you got to have rules when you do that, because uh, it's real important, man. Uh, especially if you had a liver shot or a gut shot animal. So here's the roles and, and, and some rules along with it. You need one person that's what we call the last blood tracker. That's the person that marks it. Okay. Um, that could, you know, if there's only two of you, you're, you're doing that, man, you're staying on the blood, you're marking it. And then you, we always like to have what we call our forwards, our forward scout. Our, mm -hmm. our trail scout that's the person that's staying off to the side and while that person's on blood they're kind of walking ahead off to the side looking for blood of off where they think the trail is and at the same time looking ahead looking to the sides and guys whenever you're doing this when you're tracking an animal don't forget to use your ears and use your nose yeah. because sometimes you can smell those animals when you're getting close to them or you hear gurgling or you hear them thrashing or you hear, you know, that death thrash that, that we yeah. talk about on there. And if there's three of you, you know, uh, you can have guy that, you know, we have the forward trail scout, the one that's working the trail. And then we have somebody that we call just our forward animal scout, somebody that is off to the side using binos, looking around the edges and checking for an animal while people have their head down when they're tracking, right. you know, try to keep those numbers low because, you know, the thing is, is if there's too much noise, if there's people that get on the blood trail, walking back and forth, they destroy and mess up the area. I mean, the things, the tracks that you might find, the turned rocks, um, sure. little specks of blood can all get ruined uh, from guys that mean well, but they got big old feet and they're walking all over the place. All right. Yeah. Yep. That's uh, right. You know, stay quiet. Another thing is if you do sight the animal, don't yell. I oh, got him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. He's right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Exactly, I mean, man. the animal's still alive. He ain't, he's going to be even livelier now. Yeah. You, you know, got keep, him keep it down. Out of, back out of there and come get somebody. Uh, and well, and that's the other thing, too, guys. When you're tracking, always track with your weapon. Absolutely. Because if you come to where that animal is still up, still alive, it's going to be important to have that weapon with you. Be able um, to get down, yeah. Right. Yeah. Always have your weapon with you. Yeah. Um, the other thing, when you're tracking, if you come across an empty bed with blood in it, that means you've jumped that critter. Yeah. So that means now, again, you need to back out and wait. Yeah. Don't go jumping it again. And uh, Gilbert, you always hear this thing about a wounded animal wants to go downhill, you know. Uh, That's not always true. It's not always true. I shot a cow with the great Carl Gamage standing right next to me, and I, I mean, I hearted her. If you, if you take, I've got a picture of her heart. There's a perfect triangle of a heart craft broadhead right through the middle of her heart, and she ran uphill and i'm not talking about a little hill i'm talking about a big steep hill right she went uphill at least 120 yards before she piled up a good With friend of mine shot. mr don primley um did a frontal on an animal that in probably a minute and a half ran down the hill we were on crossed a small valley and went up 400 yards straight up the hill on the other side and died 
Yeah. Now it left a blood trail Ray Charles could have followed, but <laughs> but that uh, booger went sure. straight uphill. Yep. And and and, I, and I'll I'll tell you guys when you're tracking these animals and and you have and you think it's a good hit, a lot of times where they you hit them they will haul straight up that hill, yep. and 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 go to the top of it to bed down. And I'm not sure. You know, if that's because uh, to try to get away from predators, to make sure their scent's not down low, I'm not sure what it is, but a lot of times they'll they'll do that. So that's that's one to keep in with you. Okay. For sure. Now, uh, there are things that change the game on when to track and not to track too. You bet. Um, if it's getting dark on you and you're in hot temperatures, well, now you're stuck you know, because most of the time I like to wait on it. If I got a cold night, I'm going to wait. And especially if I think that that animal's liver hit, if mm -hmm. it's gut hit, mm -hmm. now if it's lung hit and I know I got two holes, I'm probably going to track it in the dark. All right. Yeah. But if it's liver hit or if it's gut hit, I don't like to, to, to track it there. But you know, uh, if it's hot, I don't know. You, you, this is some of the things you got to weigh on that, and you got to make that executive decision. Sometimes. Or if you got a rainstorm approaching, you know weather, right? For sure. Yeah, uh, got to make a decision. It. Yep. And uh, you know, one thing that happened to us this year, man, it was not a minute after that bull that uh, one of our guys hit yeah. that there was a coyote on that bull, calling other coyotes in and actually got that bull to get running. And that's something that can change a situation. And, and there's one other one too, is when an animal is muscle hit. There's two rules of thought on that. One is to let them lay down to stiffen up in that and then try to get a stalk in on them if possible and to get a second arrow into that animal. Um, an, another one is to keep that animal moving so that that animal bleeds. Um, right but both of them can end poorly a lot of times with a muscle hit. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I mean, it's be, it's pretty superficial. You can tell it's real dark red blood, muscle blood. Right. Um, and uh, a lot of that comes from the lower extremities, brisket. Uh, you know, another thing to tell too, if you shot low and got brisket and didn't get in the thoracic cavity, um, you can see there's a lot of fat on your arrow. You sure. Know? Uh, exactly. Fat usually comes from the rump and it comes from up front in the chest uh, around that brisket. So those are things that you got to make pay attention to what your arrow looks like. Uh, you know, even the hair that's on your arrow, you know, if sure. it's real short hair, white, that comes from the belly and stuff like right. that. Right. Even on an elk, it's whiter up underneath their belly. Exactly. Uh, and good point. Those are really things that jump out to me when I'm, when I'm looking at, you know, tracking. Uh, right. and, and looking at the muscle blood that's down or whatever. I mean, I've tracked a lot of elk, you know, a lot of elk over the years with you and I've tracked my own and uh, I can tell when it's superficial or when it isn't, you know. So let's talk about what if you lose blood. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And I, I think the most important thing is if you lose blood, most guys, when the blood dries up, they're like, oh, well, the animal's okay. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, Couldn't be that's, further from the truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Guys, look, if you lose blood, don't, don't give, give up. up on that. No, yeah. because that happens all the time. A mm -hmm. wound can get plugged. And, and that's one reason that I, with bow hunters, you know, and I mean, it happens with rifle hunters. The only thing, good thing about a rifle hunters is, is that exit hole generally is pretty good size exit hole. If you're shooting for from sure. above, it's going to be a lower, lower hole. Yeah. That really helps you out a lot there. But, you know, if, if you shoot uh, a bull with an arrow in that heart area or anywhere right around that shoulder, that, that lower elbow, man, as soon as they start running, they'll shear that arrow if it hasn't gone all the way through. And yeah. when they do that, when they shear that arrow and the arrow's inside of them, yeah, that arrow's doing its job. But what happens is, is that loose skin ends up Covers getting over hole. top of that and that animal bleeds internally. You're not going to get blood, but the animal's going to die. Okay. Yeah. So, um, real important things to, to remember here, especially the whole time when you start tracking, guys, make sure you're tracking yourself on your GPS uh, because that's going to tell you a lot of things. It's going to tell you general direction, it's going to tell you what slope that animal's taking. It can mm -hmm. help you in a lot of ways like that. Plus, 
when you've lost the blood and you have some of these other techniques we're going to tell you about don't work, you're going to go to gridding. And what we mean by gridding is you're going to walk in, in a circle and you're mm -hmm. going to keep working out and working out and working out, um, uh, trying to find that animal. Now you, you can flatten if you know that animal is heading up and you've already covered an area you can flatten the bottom of that grid and head you know to where you're going through the same point and then just keep it enlarging it to the top and the sides okay or you can go back and forth just like a half circle or mm -hmm. when you do that but your gps will really help you cover that and uh so that's real important so if you've lost blood number one from the very first point, you should have looked for tracks. You should look, I mean, that animal digs in. Now, the thing is, is once they start walking, their tracks aren't digging in as much, but if they start to go uphill or they go downhill, or if they're in a mud situation, or if they're in snow, all of that helps you. Take a look at that track, the size of it, the shape of it. Memorize that because there might be a point if it gets in with other tracks that you're going to have to identify that and you're going to have to identify the newness of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, make sure as you're tracking, you make sure you're using your nose, your ears and your eyes. Okay. I can't tell you how much the nose plays into good comes yes, into effect, especially uh, it seems like every one of those animals, they're going to run downwind. So they can they can check everything that's go, coming at them, right? Right. Uh, so yeah, you can actually smell them uh, as you're tracking them. You know, right. I, it real important for you to pay attention to your nose. Real huge, and and if it especially if it's gut shot, man, you can yeah. smell that punch, man. For sure. You can smell it from a long ways off. It's a and, big uh, punch, man. There's a lot yeah. in it. <laughs> and, you know? and the a Jeez. bull himself, man, if it's during the rut, they Ooh. have just a smell on them, man. You're gonna you smell bet. that musty smell, okay? Yeah. Um, another thing is, start checking if you've lost blood on the ground start checking branches that they go through or they go by at wound level if yeah. you saw where that hit was start checking that wound level look underneath leaves as you're going and a lot of times you can find that look for overturned rocks kicked logs where their foot as they're getting tired they get lazy and they'll start clipping stuff they, you know they'll start putting you know things on the dirt and the snow okay um if you have done that and you haven't located any more blood uh, and you've done the grid search some other things that you can try is that you know uh, you can think about where the closest water source is because if they're sick sometimes they'll head to that water source if all of that goes bad man and and you have put in your time and I'll tell you what does that mean to put in your time your due diligence is whatever it takes to exhaust all things. If you've done the grid, and and I tell you what, we found a bull. Uh, when I say we, I was on it earlier, but one of our guides in our camp there in September, it did a 12-hour tracking job and located a bull um, on that. It was an incredible tracking job. Picked up blood, uh, lost blood probably around 10 a.m., found blood again at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and yeah. it was almost dark when they found that animal still standing wow. and got a second shot on it so you know do your due diligence if you have exhausted everything back out watch and listen for crows because joe was that bull liver shot or did he get one lung or you know, it was the bottom part of the lung, a very little small part of the lung and a small part of the liver. Wow. So um, it was going to take him a while before he expired. Yeah. In fact, that animal not only went uphill, but that animal tried to, to herd cows. Wow. They, yeah. They found a time, you know, a location where all the track where he was actually trying to herd some cows up. <laughs> it, They're it's so crazy. tough, Joe. Yeah. Those critters yeah. are so tough, man. But let's say, let's say Gilbert, you've located that animal. You spotted that animal, that animal's down, whether it's a half hour, whether it's an hour, I don't care what it is. And you start to approach that animal. Number one, have your weapon in your hands and have that weapon ready. ready okay? Yes, sir. When you're coming up to that animal, get your binos and take a look at it and to see if that chest is up, going up and down. Now, there's some warning signs that tell you to be careful. If those horns are in an upright position, that critter's not dead. <laughs> right. Okay? Yeah. You see ears raised? Yeah. All right? Okay? 
that mm. animal is not dead. If you look in those binos and you can see that chest going up and down, that animal is not dead. Now, mm. does that mean you have to put another? No, you can sit off and wait, mm -hmm. or you can put another killing shot in them. It depends on on where that you see, uh, and you can actually tell, you know, if it's lung and you hear that animal gurgling, they're getting ready to expire. Yeah. And you know, uh, it's a good time for you to be able to honor that animal, say a prayer over it, and sure. And, and uh, and then put it down. Okay. One of the big things for me too is his eyes will always be open when they when they die. You know, they right. won't be closed eyes. If they got their eyes closed, you better be ready. You better be ready. And <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you another time to be ready. Uh, rifle hunters, you take a shot. Bow hunters, you take a shot, and you hit that animal, and they drop in their tracks. Yeah, be you ready. Have to better get ready up. for another shot because you have spined that animal. Or yeah. you have spine shocked that animal. Sure. And that animal is not dead. Okay. So I, I hunted with the the famous Canadian Steve Tucker, who's shot at more giant bulls than I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but Tucker shot a bull <laughs> all prone off a pack at about 135 yards and knocked that bull with a 50 caliber muzzle loader. He knocked that bull clean off his feet, Joe. Bull goes down, and, of course, I dogpile him. I'm thinking we got him. Big old six by six, probably a 330, 340 class bull. I dogpile him and everything, and the bull gets up. Brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was stone dead laying there. I'm talking not even wiggling, and the no. bull gets up, and R.C. Knox goes, he's getting up, he's getting up, he's getting <laughs> up. So we reload that gun, and the bull kind of just ambles off a little bit. I cow call to him, and he turns broadside again at about 155. And uh, well, let's make a, st a long story short. He shot about three foot over his back, and we had never <laughs> seen that bull again. And oh, I tell you, goodness. he hit that bull in the – frontal in the first time coming off in the front and it not with that 50 caliber it hit him in the horn i don't know how he did that but he did and it knocked that bull damn near clean out uh, well it did knocked him out for just a second and down he, went fraser you know, down went fraser i'm telling you and we thought he was done but that bull got i've seen a lot of stuff Joe, I'm telling you, I up, right so when we went down there looking for blood there ain't no blood well, I'm, I'm looking around shining my light and I see something really shiny and you, it's, it is the Sabbath, the Sabo that shot out of that gun that hit the horn. It's laying in the dirt, a perfectly looking Barnes bullet that's laying there in the dirt. I'll never forget it. He's got the horn and the bullet to remember the, the bull by. So wow. I'll um, be darn unbelievable deal, but yeah. So every time you knock them down, they, ain't de they, you know, a lot of times they ain't dead. You just got to keep, keep watching them. Well, you know, uh, Gilbert, where we're at right now in our time, we've got two fellas that are in our lineup for our Elk Bros mailbox. I, and, and guys, I hope what we just said helps you out a ton. Uh, we've yeah. tried to give you years of experience there uh, in, in this hour. And uh, I tell you what, I, I'm hoping that that hour of experience we've given you is going to help you recover an animal that you might have lost. If that happens to, with just one of you out there, we did then what, the time we've spent has just been golden for us, okay? Um, and we have two guys that are, that are lined up in our Oak Rose mailbox. Um, both of these gentlemen, the first one is Zach Fisher from Pennsylvania. We talked about Zach earlier. Yeah. And the second one is Brian Taylor out of Idaho. Both these gentlemen, because of the time and place of their questions, I had actually talked with them and, and, and I know they're taken care of. Um, I don't want to get started on these tonight because if I do, we're going to rush through them and, and I don't want to do that. So sure. I know that this was a long topic this evening, but it was so important, especially with all of our people out in the woods right now. So, um, Zach, um, you, you you're going to hear yours, Brian. Um, you're going to hear yours next time you guys are first in the lineup. We've got some other questions that are lined up behind them. In fact, you know, if we get a whole bunch of questions in there, we just might do a Q&A. Because, Gilbert, it is just about time 
for an Ornellis Unleashed. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Man, we've been a long while. I got I got a whole lot of good material, that's for sure, buddy. It was showing sure off Unleashed up on that mountain this year for sure. And so I tell I'll you what, guys. Yeah, you guys listening to this right now, um, <laughs> I, I want you to let us know. Uh, pop us an email, pop us anything, and and tell us I'm ready for Ornellis Unleashed. And for if sure. I get some of those, then yeah, be careful what you wish for. That's all I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, as always, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, rate. Please and subscribe. You got to go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes to review, and you can check out more of our elk hunting content at elkbros.com. Again, yes, if you want to send us an email or you have questions that we can view here on Elk Bros, just send the, your questions to info at elkbros.com. That's info at elkbros.com. We appreciate everybody's uh, input. And uh, like Joe said, good or bad, but be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, yeah. share it with a friend, man. I tell yes, you, uh, I've, I've seen I've seen some of the, the podcast listenings as, as people out in the woods slow down a little bit. I hope to see that pick up. Uh, we still have a ton of y'all listening, but please share it with a friend and, uh, and subscribe, 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 y'all. You bet. Well, it's come that time, Joe. So right. for Joe in New Mexico, I'm Gilbert Ornelas here in Spring, Texas. We want to thank all of our grinders out there. God bless all of you. Husbands, hug your wives and kiss your wives. Wives, kiss your husband. Hug your babies. Keep your broad head sharp and your powder dry. And we'll see you next week right here on Blue Collar Elk Hunting. God bless everybody. Mm -hmm.